Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I just want to uh, go over, I guess, um, some fundamental analysis that I did in a private members group on the 4th of uh, November, which was uh, this day here, right? And um, in that private members group, um, I explained to them, and you're going to watch the video in a sec, um, pretty much why I had a short bias on the dollar, right? This is, you know, in real time, um, private members group that we hold every Wednesday. And, um, you know, from that day, you know, uh, from the 4th of uh, November until, you know, the actual absolute lows, you know, prices pretty much went around 400 pips. Now, um, you know, picking again a, a direction, um, when it comes to trading is 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 uh, is a big problem for traders generally right the second problem is again um you know the timing of of, of when prices are going to turn around but if you can um and we do it trading 180 um if we understand which way prices should generally want to go over the medium to long term meaning medium to long term meaning you know month to three months um then everything else becomes a lot easier in a sense that the, the timing then, if you understand that you just want to get short, all you're looking at is generally just uh, uh, short trades, right? At areas of supply um, or whatever your strategy is. So, you know, the banks use fundamental analysis. Um, so why don't we, right? And, I, and fundamental analysis is very misunderstood. A lot of traders think that, you know, all you need to... Um, you know, everything that you need to know uh, is in price action and... Um, uh, if that is true, then, you know, good for them. But if you are struggling to pick a direction and, uh, you know, look at a, look at um, a currency pair and, and decide which way it's going to go over the next, you know, month or two or three, um, then fundamental analysis really is for you. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's going to be something that you can master in, you know, a week or two. This is uh, a lot of hard work, which is the reason why, you know, probably 90% of YouTubers stick to technical analysis because who can't learn fun, um, technical analysis in, in, in a couple of days? All you need is support and resistance, right? Break pullbacks and all that and all that stuff. Um, trading is obviously a lot more complex than that. And, um, and so anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you, um, and I'll continue to show you as well, make some more videos. You can always go back through my uh, my um, my YouTube channel and look at my past videos on, on really how I uh, trade, um, you know, the markets using fundamental analysis as my anchor, as my guiding light, and how, uh, you know, traders manage to uh, stay on the right side of the trades once, you know, the fundamental analysis they've completed and the trade idea they've got is sound right I'm not saying that we're going to win every single trade that's not you know that's impossible but if you you know just pick a direction to trade right all you're looking for is generally just pullbacks in that direction yeah just pullbacks in the direction of the trend that's all you're looking for anyways uh Look, I look forward to what I say. I look forward, but I hope you look forward to watching the video. Here's the video here that we did on the 4th of November um, in the private members group um, as well, just to kind of show you that this was the uh, the video right here. Of course, uh, if you do want to join the group, you'll get access to all of these videos, all these past videos. But this was the, um, the webinar that I held on the 4th of November, bank hikes and timelines, stop hunt entries, um, and, and many other things that I covered in that uh, video. But here it is, and uh, here's a snippet from it anyway, and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and um, it kind of proves to you and shows you, you know, that fundamental analysis really is key to successful trading. Anyways, um, Fed hike, Fed hike, Fed hike, right. Um, or are they hiking, which is basically, uh, 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 really a no. So Bloomberg at the moment, this is the, this is the uh, latest um, headline and Powell sees Fed patients on hikes, right? But ready to pounce on inflation. So Fed to start tapering asset buyers by 15 billion in November, uh, taper on track uh, to end in mid 2022 can speed up or slow down. So for those of you who are new, yeah, for those of you who are new, what is what is tapering? So during the 
um, the, the, the pandemic and the coronavirus last year, what the central bank was doing was literally buying a whole load of government bonds and government bonds is basically government debt. Yeah. So they were the buyer of last resort because there was no one else out there that was going to support any kind of, you know, buy any kind of government debt. Right. So the bank stepped in and pretty much was just buying everything, buying, 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 buying a load, a load of government debt to support uh, the government. Now what they're doing is, I don't, I can't remember, don't know the figure of what they were doing, but they were buying, let's just say, for example, they're reducing, was it, was it something like 60 billion or something like that? 60 billion a month? I don't know. Something like, something in that region. Let's just say it was, it was something like that. Yeah. 60 billion every month. And what tapering is basically just another word for is just re reducing the amount of debt that they're going to buy. Right. So, you know, they're saying that they're going to, to start reducing uh ken said you mean right now yeah but yeah exactly I, I don't know what i can't remember what it was right now what is it right now what do you know what the um what the uh what they're buying every month is it 15 billion a month uh um i thought they said yeah is is the taper but what what was the actual uh, government there it's, it's, it doesn't even really matter just i'm just leaving it as an example yeah, yeah. i know it's they're tapering in it by 15 billion in november so re let's just say it was it was 60 billion they were buying but now they're tapering by 15 billion. it was 120 oh damn it was that much okay so now what they're doing is they're reducing their um their uh their their 120 billion um, I was thinking to myself, 100, 100 billion sounded about correct, but I didn't think it was that high, but obviously it was. Um, but all they're doing is just reducing it by, they're, they're, they're tapering asset buyers by 15 billion. So let's say, for example, it is 120, yeah? It was well, it was 120 every month that they're looking to they're looking to buy in government debt. Now they're going to be looking to buy, you know, 105, for example uh 80 bill in treasuries and in mortgages oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly the, the details don't necessarily really matter too much it's more more about the the reduction in what, what it is that they're buying right so instead of instead of 120 billion for example now they're reducing it by 105 billion so what so what does that really mean yeah what that actually means is that the government now are not so much dependent upon the bank to support them yeah and buy their debt yeah, because there are other, they're going to potentially be other investors now that are seeing a recovery and uh, now can step step in and start buying, you know, the debt. And then the bank can, you know, um, uh, can reduce their, uh, their their bond purchases. That is positive for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the dollar or should be positive for the dollar, right? This has already been kind of priced in to a certain degree. You know, the, the rumor started, um, you know, months ago, months and months and months ago, um, probably in, where was it? Like March, April, May, something like that. And, um, and so uh, that's the reason why the dollar's kind of been strong for the past, like, you know, six months or so, five, six months. Um, so, so the, the next really the, the main the next step after tapering you know once they go from 105 to maybe you know uh, uh 90 billion to you know 75 billion for example and that's what's going to happen potentially every month um and as they start to reduce and reduce and reduce um uh the next step is is for 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 a central bank is to really start to potentially look to high rates yeah because there is obviously the problem of inflation, right? And if you have taken the test, then you'll understand that if inflation is above their 2% target, then rates have to be hiked or, or the, the likelihood is that rate high, um, uh, a, a hike in rates is potentially coming. So um, it's, it's a slow path towards or slower path towards a rate hike, but it's positive steps. Yeah, it's still positive steps. Now you can compare that, for example, to this is what we uh, this is this is what we have to do in currency world. Yeah, is we look at, for example, Europe, right? Who says uh, Lagarde is is says ECB is very unlikely to hike rates next year. Yeah, so they're not they're not looking to Lagarde is saying that they, Christine Lagarde is not looking to hike rates anytime soon, whereas the potential um 
there's a potential for the Federal Reserve to start hiking um, next year. I can't remember where they said it. Uh, it was somewhere. I've read, I've read so many different things. Uh, da, 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 da. But I think it was, there was supposed to be a hike in 2022 or it's start in 2022 anyway, right? Whereas Europe are pretty much not looking to do any of that. So again, the divergence at the moment, yeah, when we consider, you know, two currencies, for example, you know, the dollar, or I'll put it as, as a euro dollar trade, right? Europe, look into high rates, maybe in 2023, who knows, right? 2023. The Fed, on the other hand, are potentially, depending on obviously the data, are looking to hike or look to start hiking next year, 2022. So with that divergence right there, or I should say one leading, this one leading, and this one lagging, yeah? For anyone who's new, uh, which one should you be buying and which one should you be selling? Either Habel or Omar. You should be buying the dollar. Exactly. That's that's basically where the path of least resistance is, right? You should be shorting the euro dollar. Any pullbacks, you know, to levels should be areas, you know, to, to, to potentially short. That's it. So you, you have your direction. So then it's just a case of just looking to take trades in that direction yeah that's pretty much what what we're doing and this is how we do our fundamentals from a from a from a macro perspective is understanding the bigger picture we understand gdp yeah um and inflation right and then we can basically see from monetary policy or interest rates right interest rates yeah, what the currency is going to do. Is it going to, is the central bank looking to strengthen it? Is it looking to weaken it? Or is it just happy with what it's, where, where the value of that, of that currency right now? Again, depending upon inflation and GDP. Habel says supply zones all the way for the EU. Absolutely, absolutely. Currently, that's exactly it. And all once you establish that trade idea, yeah, it sounds complex, like a trade idea. What have I got to learn for a trade idea? But this is this is a trade idea, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that you've got to get short at every single supply zone or every single supply zone is going to work. There are going to be some times in history where, you know, for a week or two, you may get, you know, 100 or 200 pip pullback. But ultimately, the path of least resistance will be to the downside. And this is where traders tend to trip themselves up. You know what I mean? If they don't stick to the plan, you know, it's, um, um, you'll end up trying to go long at highs and then trying to sell at shorts and it just, you know, it, 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 it's a mess, right? Ultimately, what we should be doing is looking to, you know, just just uh, short the, uh, the euro dollar until proven otherwise. Like I said, are there moments where you can possibly go long? There might be some negative sentiment around the dollar. There might be some positive sentiment around the euro, of course, but we evaluate that and those situations and then decide whether it's just maybe short term, medium term or long term. If it's a long term thing, if the euro starts to strengthen now based off of certain data, then obviously you can start to look to buy the euro. But then you would say, well, do you want to buy it against the dollar? Is that the is the dollar the weakest currency out there? No. Then you start to look for the weakest currency. You start to go maybe euro Swiss or euro yen. Yeah. And that's that. So Ken says, especially if we start seeing high inflation and jobs for the dollar. Exactly. So if we start to see higher inflation and jobs, and there was a, a jobs, um, uh, uh, this came out today. So the US companies add more jobs than forecast ADP data shows. And why is jobs important? Because in a growing economy, right, in a growing economy, in a healthy economy, um, employment and unemployment is watched because companies will be employing right in a recession there's high unemployment and low employment in a an economy that's growing in the expansion or the boom phase or the recovery phase of the economic cycle you know you have high employment or higher employment employer employment is growing and you and the unemployment is going down right so this is why jobs 
are is something that you have to kind of look at. And uh, at the moment, um, there was some positive news uh, today. You know, business payrolls increased by five hundred and seventy one thousand last month after a revised five hundred and twenty three thousand gain in September, according to ADP Research Institute data. Uh, the median forecast for Bloomberg survey was called at four uh, 400,000 uh, rise. So, um, you know, there is positive data. There is rising data, right? In June, June, July, August kind of tapered off September. And then, you know, the estimate was 400K, but it obviously came in a lot higher. So, um, you know, they added, US companies added more jobs than expected. So that is a is a is a decent sign for um for uh, for for is it non farms it is non farms isn't it? non farms is the first Friday of the month I really should know that I've been doing this for years but um first Friday of the month is non farms so um that's pretty much you know a, a positive sign right and if the data supports the narrative the data supports that narrative then it's it is literally just shorts all the way right. Even if in the short term prices go tend might go higher, just if you're looking at better prices to go short, that's pretty much what this is. So, um, so yeah, so so for now, no major surprises. Of course, um, the divergences are still there. You can nitpick all you want all day as as to what you know Jerome Powell you know is 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 really saying and things like that. And I, I definitely advise people to do that. Of course. You know, look at the devil is in the details, right? But overall, you've got to, um, you know, you've got to uh, 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 look at who is the dog with the least feet. What sounds worse? If something sounds a bit uncertain, but something sounds a bit more uncertain, then you know the one that's more uncertain is going to be the one that you want to sell. 